and 334 in your hymnal, 334. To Jesus every day I find my heart is closer drawn. Let's all stand together as we sing, still sweeter every day. 334 on that first. To Jesus every day I find my heart is closer drawn. singing good to see you in church tonight and uh looking forward to what the lord has in store for us this evening had a good service this morning and uh glad you're back tonight hope you had a good afternoon and uh looking forward to what the lord has for us this evening let's have prayer together shall we our heavenly father we bow before you now this evening and lord we ask you that you would meet with us here you promised that when we gather together that there you'd be in the midst and we ask in a special way that we would sense your presence here this evening, that your hand would be upon the music, and that each of us would sing as unto you, and our praise would come to up to you, Lord, and be a, be a a blessing and encouragement to thee. But Lord, we would enjoy praising your name tonight. And Father, I pray that our hearts would be open, that you would be able to do in our lives that which would be pleasing in your sight. And the Lord, you bless the fellowship, the music, the preaching of the word of God, the giving of the tithe and the offering. May it all be for your glory, that you would be honored and you would be lifted up. So, Lord, that's our prayer for our service here this evening, and that we could leave in a little bit saying it sure was good to have been in the house of the Lord today. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. 355th. If 355, if you would turn in your hymnal, wonderful grace of Jesus greater than all my sin, 355, <clears throat> let's sing that first together, wonderful grace of Jesus greater than all my sin. Yeah. 
deep hold the master's grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea. some announcements. Uh, this is Operation Saturation, all right? We have, I think, about 2,000 gone. We still have 18,000 of these in the room down there, and uh, now it's time to go. 12 days, really. Uh, if you get them out by Friday night, that's uh, 12 days to get them out, and that's about 1,500 a day that need to get done, all right? So uh, everybody... Uh, doing the job, we can get that done. Amen. Amen. And uh, it takes everybody. Don't 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 think someone else will do it. All right. Uh, just take it on yourself to say I'm going to do my part every day. Amen. And uh, where you live, around your area, get them done. The only map I'll have in that room is I will have a map of the hilltop area where the bus route goes. And if you go into that area, just mark. There'll be a highlighter there. Just highlight the streets that you flyer. That way the next person comes in, if they go to the hilltop, they'll see what's been done and they'll know where to go after that, all right? If you go anywhere else, don't worry about it. Uh, if somebody gets two flyers, I'm not really concerned about it. Uh, sometimes that's a message in itself, you know what I mean? Amen. And uh, I want them to, uh, I'd like to see them get one at the grocery store and a laundromat and where they uh, come out from work and when they get one on their car at home or their, their house at home, I want them to get, get everywhere they go. Uh, get an invitation to come. Those of you who use social media, put it on social media. Uh, boy, it's uh, every year we get quite a few folks that come because of Craigslist. Uh, a lot of people look on Craigslist underneath the community events or free events, yeah. and boy, they see something like that and they they come. Uh, so if some of you are, have that ability to uh, post those things in those areas, uh, do that. All right, and uh, we sure could use that and uh, any way to get the word out. Uh, we're very, uh, we're becoming a very electronic society. Um, in fact, I just read uh, the uh, Jerry Lewis telethon that was on uh, every Labor Day. Uh, last year, by the way, they cut it down to just two hours. Did you know that? Uh, this year, there is none. Wow. Everything that, remember, how many remember the ice bucket challenge that went around yeah. and uh, was a big thing? Do you know they raised $100 million for that? The most they'd ever raised on television was 56 million. Wow. So it doubled what they raised on television. And so they are focusing their efforts on that type of promotion now and that type of media to get the word out uh, for muscular dystrophy. So that's just, that's just where we are. And uh, so if you are, have that, uh, if you're kind of always have that phone attached to your hand, then uh, do something with it and uh, invite folks to come, okay? Let's uh, utilize it. And, Oh, okay. If you uh, need an electronic version of the flyer sent to you, because it'll look a little crisper, a little neater, you, you see Brother Reed, he knows how to do that, all right? And uh, we'll get that to you. All righty, so uh, let's, let's stay after it. Sign out the flyers you take so we keep track of how many are being out there. Uh, there's all, the clipboard will always be there. Make sure you sign out what you have, and uh, the church will be open every day. Come whenever you want to grab them and uh, go and uh, grab other people with you and take them out and uh, just do it whenever you can do it, whenever your schedule allows it to happen, all right? And uh, regular schedule as far as Wednesday night church goes, and uh, we'll be here for the midweek service. Uh, can Thursday night, of course, the RU Inside. Uh, Friday night with former Jim is here. Uh, Saturday, uh, the only scheduled time we're going to have this year is Saturday. Would you come out on Saturday to pass out flyers? It would be great to see a good crowd of people here Saturday morning. And uh, give, give a couple hours this coming Saturday. It's only Saturday we have to really get the, get the word out. Now, it's supposed to, it, I think it's going to be nice all week long. I mean, low 80s during the day, uh, very little chance of a, a, a rain, maybe a shower or two here or there. But it's just going to be a great week to get flyers out. So uh, let's get the word out and take advantage of it and uh, make it a good time. All right. And I think that's all I have right now. 
Uh, let's take a minute and welcome any visitors we have with us in the service tonight. Jeannie, you have a guest with you. Who do you have with you? I met Heather yesterday at the high tea, I think it was, and I had good to have you tonight. Thank you for coming back on Sunday night. Our pleasure. All right, just your hand you your card there if you'll take just a minute and fill that out for us. We'd appreciate it. We'll have a record of your visit with us tonight, and then when the offering plate is passed, just put that card in there and keep the pen as our gift to you for coming. We're glad you're here. You're welcome. Let's give Heather a warm welcome, shall we? Forty six in your hymnal two four six. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Higher ground two four six. Let's sing that together. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table and a higher plane. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Let's look at that second verse. A lot of times we sing verses, we sing songs, and just totally miss. We can read the words, we can say the words, we totally miss what it's saying. Look at that second verse. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where these doubts and fears may abound, my prayer and my aim is higher ground. That third verse is so good. I want to live above the world though Satan's darts at me are hurled for faith has caught the joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. Let's sing that last together and while we sing it Really think about the words. This is powerful, powerful stuff. 
I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. Let's sing that last together. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I'll pray till heaven I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land, a higher plain than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Amen. That's great. Let's turn over to 539 together. 539, all that thrills my soul is Jesus. 539, let's stand once more as you find. Who can hear, cheer the heart like Jesus? Who can cheer the heart like Jesus? By his presence all divine, true and tender, pure and precious. Oh, how blessed to call him mine. Oh, that thrilled my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. And the fairest of 10,000 in my blessed Lord I see. What a wonderful redemption. What a wonderful redemption. Never can a mortal know how my sin, the red light crimson, can be whiter than the snow. Oh, that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. When the fairest of 10,000 in my blessed Lord I see. Amen. Great one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing the last stanza together. and supplying every good in him I see on his strength divine relying he is all in all to me more 
more than life to me. And the thousand in my blessed Lord I see. By the crystal flowing river on that last, by the crystal flowing river, with the ransomed I will sing, and forever and forever, the King, oh, that thrills my soul is Jesus, he is more than life to me. Let's sing that chorus one more time. We're going to have the instruments drop out, though. I'd like us all to sing that. Sing it with your whole heart. Let's sing as a mighty choir together. All that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. And the fairest of ten Seated. Ushers will come and get our offering now tonight. Ask that you give, continue to give as the Lord has blessed and prospered you. And it's uh, it's through your giving that we have the different ministries that uh, the Lord has enabled us to have here. And uh, good, we we were lower a little bit at the prison on Thursday evening. had had eighteen fellows there, uh, ten brand new guys and eight returning guys. We did have a graduate. A uh, fellow finished up the course and uh, and was able, we made a requirement now, not only do they have to finish the course, but they have to be able to quote Psalm 1. And a uh, fellow quoted Psalm 1 and uh, got a certificate, and uh, seven men received Christ as their Savior on Thursday night, and uh, it was just a, just a good meeting. And I uh, appreciate you giving to the RU ministry, and uh, appreciate you praying for that service on Thursday nights, all right? Well, let's pray, and we'll ask God's blessing on our offering this evening. Brother Abrams. Thank you. Let us pray. Lord, we come before your throne of undeserved kindness. We thank you tonight for prayer. And uh, we thank you that that, uh, that we can come before you, Lord. And uh, uh, we're grateful for uh, the prayer and the answered prayer. Uh, we want you to uh, keep your hand upon the service. And uh, many uh, people that... Uh, uh, don't know you, uh, may they come to know you before it's everlasting too late. And Lord, uh, um, bless this offering, uh, bless the gift, and bless the giver. And uh, we thank you so much for your love, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Sally. Take your Bible this evening, if you would, and turn to John chapter 10, please. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. We're going to read verses 27, 28, and 29, three verses, and we'll read them uh, 27 together. I'll read 28, and we'll end together reading verse number 29. John chapter 10. And as we usually do, let's stand together to read the scripture. 
All of us standing, please, to read God's Word. And let's begin together on verse 27 of John chapter 10. Ready? My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. And let's pray together, shall we? Our Heavenly Father, we bow before you now in prayer. Lord, we thank you for the Bible this evening, and thank you, Lord, for giving us your words that we hold in our hands tonight, not the words of men or the words of a man, but we believe we hold in our hands tonight the very words of God. And Lord, we pray that you will prepare our hearts and continue to do so, Lord, that we'll be in tune with you to hear what the Spirit would say to each of us this evening. Blessed is special now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Someday the stammering tongue will falter no more and the grander, sweeter song I shall sing. For I'll join the ransom choir on heaven's bright shore forever his praise to sing. And while the ages roll, I'll keep on praising him and my voice will never tire or grow old. And my song shall ever be, praise the Lamb who died for me. And I'll sing it while ages shall roll. When a million years have passed in that wonderful place, and my song of praise will just have begun. For my joy will never end while I look on his face, and my song will never be done. And while the ages roll, I'll keep on praising him, and my voice will never tire or grow old. And my song shall ever be, praise the Lamb who died for me, and I'll sing it while ages shall roll. And my song shall ever be, praise the Lamb who died for me, and I'll sing it while ages shall roll. Father, we thank you now for, the again, the opportunity and the privilege that's ours to open up your word together this evening. Lord, thank you for the good music tonight and the good spirit in this place, and thank you for people that are in their place on Sunday evening, eager once again to open up your word and to hear what you would say to each of them this evening. And so, Father, I pray you would help me as we bring the message tonight, help me to say what you would want me to say and to leave unsaid things that I don't need to say. And Spirit of God, I pray that you would speak to people's hearts as only you can. Lord, I pray that you would move up and down these aisles and in and out of these rows and you would stop at every occupied seat, that you would minister to people in this room this evening as only you can do. We love you. We want to hear from you this evening. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the greatest words in the Bible is the, words, is the word come. C-O-M-E. 
All you need, by the way, all you need for salvation is to come. That's all you need in order to be saved. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What you have to do to get saved? Come to Jesus. Come to Christ. And if you'll come to Christ, and you come just as you are, He receives you just as you are. You say, well, I'm a sinner. That's who He wants. He came to seek and to save sinners. That's how we all come to Jesus. Uh, there's none that doeth good, no, not one. There's none righteous, no, not one. We just come. And so Jesus says, come. Uh, he said in the parable of the great supper, uh, he said a man made a great supper, and then he sent his servant out at supper time to bid them that were invited to come to the supper. And remember what he said? All the servant had to say was, come, for all things are now ready. Come, for all things are now ready. Everything you need to be saved has been done. Uh, Jesus died on the cross, and when he died on the cross for our sins, he said, it is finished. Uh, he paid the debt of our sin. He died on the cross for you and for me. And He paid that sin debt. So now I don't have to. And you don't have to. But you do have to trust Him as your Savior. You do have to say, Christ, I'm coming to you and asking you to give me the gift of eternal life. And when you do that, He gives you the gift of eternal life and you're saved. But you have to come. That's a great, great word that the Lord uses. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Jesus looked at people one day and said, You will not come to me that you might have life. And if you're here tonight and you've never come to Jesus and asked Him to be your Savior, you will not have life. And uh, you will have eternal death separated from God. You don't have to, be, you don't have, to have that. You don't have to. That, that doesn't have to be your fate. But if you don't come to Jesus, that will be your eternal destiny. So come, come just as you are, come immediately, just come. And I'm thankful for the ones who come. Hey, I'm thankful I came. I'm thankful that I heard the message one day and that I came to Jesus and trusted Him as my Savior. And I know that you're happy that you came if you've come. But you know, there's another command that Jesus gave in the Scripture. There's another command that He gives after we come to Him. We see it here in John 10 and verse 27, he says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they, what's the last two words? Follow me. They follow me. Listen carefully. In Matthew 4 and verse 19, Jesus said, Follow me, and I will make you to be fishers of men. In Matthew 8 and verse 22, Jesus said, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. In Matthew 9, 9, he calls Matthew, and he says, Matthew, follow me. In Matthew 16 and verse 24, he says, If any man follow me, let him take up his cross. In Matthew 19 and verse 21, he said to the rich young ruler, Sell what you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. Jesus' call to come to him is also a call to follow him. It's a call to join him. It's a call to accompany him. A call to go in the same direction as Him. Matthew, follow me. James and John, follow me. Peter, follow me. Andrew, follow me. Others that would listen, follow me. The truth of the matter is, we've become quite comfortable, quite happy, calling ourselves Christians with little or no thought of following Jesus. The great need in our day is for those who have come to Christ to follow Jesus Christ. Those who have come to Jesus to be followers of Jesus. We sing the song, I've decided to follow Jesus. I've decided to follow Jesus. Have you ever decided that? Have you ever decided that you'll follow Him? You decided to come to Jesus. But have you decided to follow Jesus? Let me give you three thoughts this evening. And number one is this. It, it, when you make that decision, it's a matter of your will. It is a matter of the will. Turn in your Bibles. You're in John. Go to your left to the book of Luke, right before John, the Gospel of Luke. And look at chapter 9. Would you go there, please? Luke 9. And look with me, will you, at verse number 23. Where the Bible says, and he said to them, and by the way, he is who? 
that Jesus is speaking here. And he said to them all. All right, now if he said it to them all, is he talking to you and he's talking to me? We would be part of the all, would we not? All right, he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and what's the last two words, church? Follow me. Notice, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. It's a matter of the will. Many never follow Jesus because they've never made up their will that they have decided to follow Jesus. They've come for salvation, but they will not follow for service. I come, but I don't follow. Their theme song would be, Have mine own way, Lord. Have my own way. The cry today seems to be, Hey, you just ought to be glad I'm here. And that's what we hear. Hey, just be glad they're here. Be glad that I have come. Oh, listen, and, and by the way, I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad you've come. But the message of Jesus Christ is not just to come. It is to follow me. Follow me, Jesus said. Following Jesus Christ. The purpose of God for your life, the purpose of God for my life, is not fulfilled when I come to Jesus. It is fulfilled when I follow Jesus. Be a follower of Jesus Christ. When I'm going in the same direction as Christ. When I'm letting Him direct my path. That's following Jesus. That is an act of my will. Just as folks are not saved because they will not come to Christ. Listen, you don't follow Jesus because you will not follow Jesus. It's an act of your will. I would urge you this evening to come to the point in your life when you would make the conscious decision of your will that you will follow Jesus Christ. And then let me say number two, following Christ will cost you something. Notice back in Luke 9 and verse 23 again, he says, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Denying yourself and taking up your cross daily. Boy, that sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? Hmm? No, that doesn't sound very enjoyable at all. Deny myself? Take up a cross? Do you understand the disciples? They, they grasp this truth. Every one of the twelve apostles of Jesus Christ died a martyr's death. They... Well, you say John didn't. John died of old age. They tried to kill John. They threw him in a pot of boiling oil. Okay? I don't know about you. I you ever been cooking something on the stove and some of that oil splatter out on you and get on you? I don't know about you, but that kind of, you say, ouch. You know, that hurts. I cannot imagine being dumped in a pot of boiling oil. The, the amazing thing is, John got dumped in the pot of boiling oil. And by the way, to our amazement and probably to the ones who put him in there, he didn't die. He may have came out a little crispy, but he didn't die. And so they didn't know what to do with John, so they exiled him to an island called Patmos, where God said, okay, I'll give you the revelation of Jesus Christ. And he got to see the glories of revelation that he unfolds for us in the book of Revelation. He had a plan for John yet. Even Paul, who became an apostle, as one born out of due time, as he said, ended up having his head cut off for the testimony of Jesus Christ. He too became a martyr. Paul earlier wrote when he was arrested and for preaching the gospel, he said, at my first answer, no man stood with me. In other words, all the entourage that Paul had and all those people you read through the Gospels, he's always talking about the fellow laborers and the fellow ministers and the people who are helping him. And yet, when he got arrested and he had to stand before the magistrate for the very first time, he looked around and guess who he saw? Nobody. Crickets were chirping. Nobody stood with me. 
And then later on he said, only Luke is with me. My, my, my doctor stayed with me. My physician is here, but he may just be here just to give the ruling that I'm really dead. I don't know. But only Luke's the only one with me. What is he saying? I think he's saying it's going to cost you something to serve Jesus Christ. It'll cost you something to follow Jesus. And if they suffered, listen, if they suffered at the hands of unbelievers that way, why would it be any different today? Bible Christianity was not popular then. Bible Christianity is still not popular today. Oh, I understand. Religion's popular, but Bible Christianity is not popular. TV Christianity is popular, but Bible Christianity isn't popular. Wiggle and Sing's popular, but Bible Christianity is not popular. New Bibles are popular, but Bible Christianity is not popular. Sunday morning only, give me an hour's worth of church, may be popular, but Bible Christianity is not, isn't popular. American Idol and Dancing with the Stars Christianity may be popular, but Bible Christianity isn't popular. thought often in the past few weeks whether we have what it takes whether we have a generation of Christians that will pay the price to be a follower of Jesus Christ whether we have the, the metal to do it because I see a generation that just wants to do things that are convenient for them to do I want to do it if it's easy to do it I want to do it if it makes me feel good to do it that's not what the followers of Christ found in the Bible. Those 12 men, the 11 that Jesus chose and then the 12th one, Matthias, that they chose after the death of Judas, early in the book of Acts, the people looked at those 12 men and their accusation against them was, these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. He said, man, these are, these are foolish and unlearned men. They're ignorant and unlearned. Man, how can they do what they've done? How can they be as successful as they've been successful? At, by the way, they weren't trying to turn the world upside down. They were trying to turn the world right side up. And yet he said the only thing they could come up with was they took knowledge of them that they'd been with Jesus. That's it. Jesus said, follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. And yet Christians say, don't tell me how to live. Don't tell me how to act. Don't tell me what to wear. Don't tell me what I can listen to. Don't tell me any rules to follow. Don't tell me any boundaries i got to live within. Your influence, your influence is either drawing people towards Christ or it is pushing people further from Christ. That's what, that's what everybody's testimony does. People who you come in contact with on a daily basis, you're either pulling them towards Christ or you're pushing them further from Christ. All depends on what your testimony is. People come to church and they see you at church. Somebody says, what difference does it make whether I'm at church or not? You know what? Your presence at church will encourage people to sing or encourage people not to sing. It encouraged people to listen to the preacher or not to listen to the preacher. Everybody here in this room has sat and watched somebody not sing during a song service. Are you sudden you'd looked at somebody not pay any attention to the preaching? You've all seen that. And it's a distraction to you not to listen to the preaching. But it's one thing if you sit and look at somebody and you see them sitting in their seat. And you say, wow, they're really interested in what's, what this guy's saying. Maybe I should listen to what he's saying. See, you're going to either influence somebody towards it or push them away from it. Everybody does. You'll either be drawing people to witness for Christ or you'll draw others to stay silent and not do anything. You'll, you'll draw people, hey, you'll draw people these next 12 days to get with it and get out flyers or you'll influence people to stay home and not do anything different and not pass anything out for the country fair. What will your influence be? What will your testimony be? Don't make excuses. Follow Jesus. 
Don't make excuses. Follow Jesus. Surrender to him. Here in John in, in uh, Luke 9, you notice they Jesus says, Whosoever shall save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake and the, and the same shall save it. For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? God says, You can listen. The great danger, Jesus says, is living your life and being successful at something that doesn't matter. Then you wasted your life. Oh, I know the world will look and say, wow, what a success. But is it a success in God's eyes? Is it, is it what He would want you to do? Listen, surrender to Him. Surrender to Him and say, I will follow Jesus Christ. You say, preacher, you're being kind of rough on us, aren't you? No, I'd rather be rough with the truth than polished with a lie. I'm not trying to just make you feel good. Someone said, I heard today, I think we've got too many sugar-coated, we have, we've had so many sugar-coated sermons, we have churches that, are on, that are, have sugar diabetes. I think that's true. Die to self and follow Jesus. Die to self and follow Jesus. It'll Listen, it's just an act of your will, and it'll cost you something. Number three is this. Jesus said, follow me, Matthew 4, 19. Most of you know it. He looked at the disciples one day. He said, follow me, and I will make you to be fishers of men. Follow me, and I'll make you to be fishers of men, to James and John that day while they were mending their nets. Somebody says, well, preacher, what I need is a burden for the lost. And yes, we do need a burden for the lost. Well, preacher, what I really need is compassion. I need a, a soft heart. And, and you do. We need compassion, and we need a soft heart. But that's not our real need. And we need a burden, but that's not our real need is a burden. Our real need is to be followers of Jesus Christ. That's our real need. Because if we follow Him, He will... Make us to be fishers of men. Have you ever asked Jesus to make you? Make me. Remember the prodigal? The story of the prodigal son? When he left home, it was give me. Give me the inheritance that is due me. Give me what's mine. Give me, give me, give me. But when he lost it all, and he's sitting in the pigsty, looking at the pig slop, thinking that looked pretty good to eat. He thought, you know what? They got a lot better back home than what I got it here. And when he came back home, he said, Father, I've sinned against you and against heaven. Make me as one of your hired servants. Make me. Where are you in your Christian life? Where are you in your relationship with God? Are you in the give me stage? Give me, give me, give me. Hey, God, give me. Hey, God, give me this. Hey, God, give me that. Are you in the God? Make me. Make me your servant. Make me a fisher of men. Make me to win others to Christ. He'll make you love the lost. He'll, if you follow Jesus, you'll have a love for those who don't know Jesus. If you follow Jesus, you'll have a compassion for those who don't know Christ. And you'll want them to know Him as their Savior. If you follow Jesus, He'll give you a zeal to serve Him and to do His will for your life. You know, it's not unusual when you hear someone is dying. Sometimes if you even hear someone has already passed away. Does, you, does a thought ever come to your mind, I wonder if they were saved or lost? I hmm? wonder if they, if they knew they were going to heaven. The tragedy of things that have happened, oftentimes whether it's, uh, you know, and, and by the way, we, we get, uh, we, we hear the cases that the, that the media wants to sensationalize, but there's, there's people who get shot, there's people who get killed every day. And the thought is, Listen, not, it's tragic anybody has to be shot. Tragic anybody has to die. But my thought always is, are they, were they prepared to die? You know, one thing that most people don't get to do, and that is you don't get to choose when or how you're going to die. 
You don't get that choice. The only choice you get is, are you ready to die? Are you ready to go into eternity? And I often wonder, follow me and I'll make you to be fishers of men. I wonder if people are saved, whether if they know Jesus Christ. In fact, when somebody's dying, nothing else really matters, does it? I told you the story before when my brother was dying of pancreatic cancer. And he's laying in the hospital bed up at Altman Hospital in Canton, Ohio. And he called me and said, I want you to come up. I need you to talk to my wife, Yvonne, and I want you to talk to my... He had a, a son and a daughter, Corey and Shannon. And I walked into the room up there in Altman Hospital, and my brother, with what we didn't know at the time, would only be a few weeks left to live. And I had to look at this family that... Oh, probably he'd count on one hand in 30 years of marriage how many times he had him in church. And would have to tell them that he knew as a young boy that he accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior. And he told his family, he said, I know that I might not have long, but I know where I'm going when I die. I, I know I have eternal life. And he looked at his family, his wife, his son, his daughter, and he said, now I want you to listen to my brother Stan. He's going to tell you how you can know you're going to heaven when you die. And then he looked at me, and I shared the plan of salvation with those folks. You see, not only when someone else is dying, but you know what? When you're dying, all that's going to matter is am I saved or am I lost? And what about my loved ones? Are they saved? Are they lost? I want them to be saved. The greatest, listen, the, the greatest thing you can do with your life after you receive Christ as your Savior yourself is to tell someone else how they can receive Christ as their Savior. To give, listen, to be able to point someone else to Jesus and have them receive the gift of eternal life. D.L. Moody used to say, God only killed the fatted calf once for you. If you want to enjoy the fatted calf, you've got to have someone else come to Christ and enjoy it with them. It's great joy when people come to know Christ. Someone said, one pastor said in the Great Commission, the Lord has called us to follow Him and He will make us fishers of men. We've turned the commission around so that we've become merely keepers of the aquarium. Occasionally, the pastor said, I take some fish out of your fishbowl and put them in mine, and you do the same with my fishbowl. And we just trade fish, but we're all tending the same fish. My friend, that's not what God's called us to do. It's easy to determine when something's on fire. When something is aflame, it ignites other material. A fire that does not spread will eventually go out. And a follower of Jesus Christ, who is not a soul winner, is a contradiction in terms. It's just like you're saying, well, that's a great fire, but it's not burning. Well, if it's a fire, it's burning. If it's not burning, it's not a fire. This, that's a contradiction in terms. A, a follower of Jesus that is not a soul winner is a contradiction in terms. Because Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you to be a fisher of men. What a great opportunity we have in these next two weeks to be fishers of men. Will you make it your business? Will you make it your business to be a fisher of men? Will you ask Jesus to make you be a fisher of men these next two weeks? Ask Him. Follow Him. And, and yield yourself to Him. You know, it was a wonderful day. It was a great day. In fact, we testify to the day that we came to know Jesus Christ as our Savior. I'm not saying that you may remember the exact day or the hour or the time or the minute or anything like that, but, but you know what happened. The fellow said, I was there when it happened, and I ought to know. And that's the way it is. And we testify, thank the Lord saved me that day. 
And I called on the Lord Jesus. And, and I remember I was a young boy, but I remember kneeling down on a Sunday evening when I got saved and uh, the second chair in on the left-hand side of the auditorium and knelt down there and evangelist Bill Halad opened his Bible and showed me how to be saved. And I prayed and asked Christ to be my Savior. I remember that. See, and, and we talk about the great day we came to Christ. Let me ask you a question. Do you ever testify of the day that you said, I'll follow Jesus? The day where you said, I'm going to be a follower of Jesus Christ? Do you have a day like that? Do you have a time when you said, I'm going to follow Jesus Christ? I know that it's an act of my will. I know that it's going to cost me something, but I'm going to follow Jesus Christ because he'll make me to be a fisher of men. That's all that's going to matter when life's over. You stand before the Lord. That's what's really going to count. It's a great day. It's a wonderful day when you hear Jesus say, follow me, and you follow. And you say, yes, Lord, I'll follow you. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Hey, what if nobody joins you? Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Don't turn back. Jesus said, whoever puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Church, let's be followers of Jesus Christ. Follow me. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, take the truth now this evening. Thank you, Lord, for everyone's attention tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for these plain words that you gave. Thankful for the word come. And I'm, God, I'm so grateful, and Lord, we're thankful that in order to receive the gift of eternal life, all we had to do was come. We come just as we are, and you receive us as we are, you forgive us of our sins. You give us the righteousness, the perfectness of Jesus Christ. You will receive your gift of eternal life, which is through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we know that when we die, we'll go to heaven because we possess eternal life with you. Thank you that we could just come for all things are ready. Everything to be, that need to be accomplished for salvation, you accomplished when you died on the cross. And yet, Lord, I pray that tonight folks would also, by their will, by counting the cost, by desiring to, for you to make them to be fishers of men, would say, I'll follow you, Jesus. I will be a follower of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that we would have a church that are followers. Follow me. Speak to hearts this evening. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I'll finish the prayer in just a moment. Before I do that, just between you and God right now, I wonder how many folks in the room tonight would say, Pastor, there was a day when I heard Jesus say, Come, and I came to Him. And I received Him as my Savior. And Pastor, I know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I am 100% sure that if I died this evening, that I would go to heaven. My faith is in Jesus Christ. Here's my hand as a testimony. Would you slip it up for a moment that I may see that? All right, you may put it down. Who's here this evening and say, Pastor, I'll be honest, and God knows, doesn't he? And no one's looking, just between you and the Lord. You'd say, you know what, Pastor, I don't know there's ever been a time in my life 
when I receive Jesus as my Savior. And I ask Him to forgive my sin and I put my faith and trust in Him alone as my Savior. Say, Pastor, I appreciate you praying for me. And I won't embarrass you. I won't call you out, but I'll pray for you. Is there somebody like that? You couldn't raise your hand the first time. You'll raise it this time. Would you do that? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you over here. I see that hand. I see it back there. Thank you, young lady. I wonder how many believers here tonight would say, Pastor, I could tell you about the day I come to Jesus. I'm not sure I could tell you about a time when I made the decision to follow Jesus. But tonight could be that night. Tonight could be that decision. May the 3rd, 2015. You could write it down in your Bible and say, May 3rd, 2015, I decided to follow Jesus. Are you a follower? Or have you just come and have no intent of following. If God has spoken to your heart tonight and you say, you know what, preacher, that's my problem. I've come to Jesus, but I can't say I'm a follower of Jesus. But God has spoken to my heart tonight, Pastor. And I appreciate you praying for me as well. Would you slip your hand up, Christian, and say, that's me? I need to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Will you do it? God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. This is, this is big time here. This is rubber meeting the road, isn't it? I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And I know what that means. When you stand before Jesus one day, won't you be glad you followed him? Won't you be thankful that you followed him? I'm going to pray. I'll pray for these whose hands have been uplifted. Christian, if you have your hand up and you've asked tonight to be a follower, why don't you come and kneel at the altar, just like you did when you got saved, maybe. And just make the decision, I'll be a follower of Jesus Christ. If you want me to make that public, we'll make it public. We'll announce it, just like we do when somebody gets saved. Then, then others can help you keep following Jesus. If you're here tonight and you've never received Christ as your Savior, I'm going to pray for you. While others come to pray tonight, why don't you just slip from your seat and I'll be waiting here at the front. We'll let someone who's been trained take a Bible. In a few moments, they can show you how you can know Jesus as your Savior. You can walk out the auditorium tonight with the peace of God in your heart that your sins are forgiven and that your name's written down in heaven. We invite you to come. Heavenly Father, Thank you for speaking to our hearts this evening. Thank you for hands that have been uplifted, indicating that you've spoken to their heart. And Lord, I pray whether these who need to receive you as their Savior, I pray they'd come. They wouldn't put off another day. I don't know if they'll have another opportunity to receive Christ. They may. But they won't have a better opportunity than they have right now this evening. And I pray they'd come. I pray for the Christians here that you've spoken to their heart. May they come and bow the knee and say, Father, on May 3rd, 2015, from this point forward, I will be a follower of Jesus Christ. Have your will and way in every heart and life, and I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she plays, Bob's going to sing the invitation hymn. The Lord has spoken to your heart. Respond to him this evening. Will you please? That's right. I have decided to follow Jesus. That's right. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. That's no right. turning back. No turning back. That's right. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind. 
behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Father, we thank you now for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for meeting with us tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for laying down your life for us. Help us to be willing to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow you. Lord, all we want to do, it's a great compliment we could have if people would just say they're followers of Jesus Christ over there. Lord, help us to keep our eyes upon Jesus as we run this race. He's the author and finisher of our faith. And I pray that we'll please you as we go about your business this week. Dismiss us with your care, Lord. Bless the flyers that go out this week. Bless the witnessing. Bless the gospel as it goes forth. Lord, we know that it'll never return void. Pray your blessing upon it now. Dismiss us with your care. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing It's a Grand Thing to Be a Christian. We're uh, dealing with a young lady in there this evening, uh, Jeannie's sister. So we'll let Miss Slayball take the time with her and deal with her about salvation. And uh, we'll sing together It's a Grand Thing to Be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Flyers are down in the conference room. Make sure you sign them out on the sheet so we know how many are out, okay? Here we go. Hey, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus anywhere and everywhere I go for. It's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below. It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. God bless you. You're dismissed.